Now, very first story. There's a gold rush at a new site in the Brunhafu region, attracting illegal miners or Galamsey operators from across the country and beyond. As usual, the environment is taking a beating from the Galamsey operations, except this time, an important national asset, the Bui Dam, is under threat or could be under threat. A man in the Brunhafu region, Nestor Kafuya Joma, has been to the site at Dogochina and reports. This is a daily phenomenon from the Jamatoko landing site to the mining site at Dokochina. The news team gathered that the Galamse operations here started just about two months ago. News of the presence of gold at this site has spread throughout the country and beyond to the extent that aliens from Mali, Togo, Benin, as well as Cote d'Ivoire are trooping in to prospect. All kinds of equipment are transported over the Black Volta via speedboats to the Galamse site at Dokochina. Safety appears not to be a major concern to the prospectors as they hardly use life jackets on their overloaded boats which convey both passengers and goods to the Galamse site. In arriving at the legal mining site, one is ushered in to see some people called the committee members who normally charge a fee and then allocate a portion of land for prospecting. The news team was told by one of the numerous female Galamse operators. The committee members represent the Dukuchina leaders who she says visit the site quite often and were actually there over the weekend. Mining here involves digging the soil and collecting the sand to be washed for gold to be extracted. The destruction caused to the environment is massive. Equally worrying is a threat to the integrity of the recently commissioned Bui Hydroelectric Dam, which is not very far from Dukochina. The operators here are very much aware about the destructive nature of their activities, but they tell the news team that is what ends them a living, complaining there are no jobs. Water from the lake is also being heavily polluted as the wastewater from the operations is relieved back into the water body along with the dangerous chemicals used to extract the gold. Apart from the pollution of the water, trees are also being constantly fell and huge craters where ore is dug out is left uncovered after the mining. Meanwhile, the area is attracting traders who are there to serve the needs of the Galamse operators. Indeed, these miners may find their gold and earn a living in the process, but at what expense? A stitch in time by authorities is badly needed to this time save the environment and the Bui Dam which is too close for comfort. Nesta Kafuya Jomes report from Dokochina in the Bonoafu region. So how much of a threat are the activities of the Galamsi operators to the Bui Dam? We're joined on the phone line now by Wumbela Salifu, is the external and community relations manager at the Bui Power Authority. Good evening to you, sir. Is the authority aware of the operations of these miners at Dokochina and what do you know about them? Uh, Good evening, uh, Mr. Lai, and I, I wish to greet your cherished viewers and listeners. The, the authority is, is aware of this worrying act, uh, activity taking place at the old Dokuchina, and we, the authority hasn't sat back. The, the authority has raised this issue with the security agencies for them to quickly come around and then solve it. What, what do you know about what is happening there? Uh, w what I do know is that we have Ghanaians and foreigners who are currently at the old Dokochina. And as your reporter just indicated, they are, they are, they are undertaking galaxy activities over there. How close is the area to the dam sites? And uh, should we be worried about the operations? I, I think, yes, we should be worried about the, what is happening at old Dokochina. Uh, as you are aware, the Bui Dam is a national asset, and since we have foreigners in their large numbers and Ghanaians as well engaging in an illegal act, th their presence there poses a security threat to the dam. So to that extent, that the, the, the security agencies have been notified about this, 
and I'm sure in the coming few days some action will be taken to, to address this problem. The gallantry activities also is leading to a degradation of the land and obviously that would have an impact on, on the blue reservoir. And so it's it's it, it, it's really a worrying incident. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, Wumbila Salifu. He's the external uh, relations manager at the Buipa Authority. In other news, uh, the Attorney General and Minister for Justice has assured Parliament her ministry is not relenting in efforts to retrieve monies due the state from recent court rulings with specific reference to Martin Amidu versus the Attorney General and Isofoton and Waterville. She says even though the matter is still pending before court, the ministry is continuing to pursue it using appropriate legal processes. The Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Marita Bri Apia Opon, in her response to a question posed by MP for Bekwai, Jose Wusu, told the House her office has sought to recover the 325,572 U.S. dollars and subsequent payments thereafter paid to Isofoton by the government. But she said this has eluded the ministry until January 23, 2014. On the 23rd day of January 2014, Isopoton entered conditional appearance to its solicitors for at law. And on the 6th of February 2014, they filed a notice of motion application for order setting aside the plaintiff's rate of summons and its service thereof through its lawful attorney. This application has been fixed for the 19th of February 2014. After several appeals by Waterville to prevent the case from going to the High Court, the Minister indicated the case is now going to proceed. On the 20th of January 2014, the Court of Appeal again ruled in favour of the Attorney General and dismissed Waterville's application for stay of proceedings pending appeals. Upon the dismissal of this application for stay of proceedings pending appeal by the Court of Appeal, the, the, it paved the way for the matter to proceed in the High Court. Still in Parliament, members of the House have marked National Chocolate Day with pieces of advice to the public. These sensitive findings indicate that Toko has properties that help induce normal blood flow as well as improving blood vessels, salary, both of which help to reduce blood pressure. Valentine's Day is also a day to reflect on the symbolic nature of marriage. And I will take this opportunity and urge all married couples to renew their love, to, re to rekindle their friendship, to bring some love flavor into their marriages. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts appeared before the Public Accounts Committee to answer to the Auditor General's report. Sitting resumes on Tuesday, February 18. A national cocoa festival will be instituted every year by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts to help revamp the cocoa industry and also introduce farmers to new technologies in improving yields. Cocoa is still a major foreign exchange earner for the country, raking in an estimated $2 billion in 2013. Minister of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Abla Jifa Gomashi, at the celebration of this year's Chocolate Day in Accra, drop hints about the plan to create a cocoa village. The Ministry of Tourism and Creative Arts would want to collaborate with the Cocoa Board and its agencies to create an integrated ecotourism experience, providing accommodation in rustic but decent lodging facilities located in, co in a cocoa farm or cocoa farm where the planting harvesting and other agronomic practices could be experienced for a fee. The National Cocoa Festival, which the Ministry wants to establish every year, is intended to encourage internal tourism around the cocoa sector. Cocoa's contribution to the economy of Ghana is significant, providing jobs in six regions of Ghana and contributing a third of total export earnings. But if you do consider that, apart from the, the regions that produce it, uh, the products are sold in all the 10 regions, and indeed, cocoa has done a lot for our country. The Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, on its part, plans to promote agro-tourism centered on Ghana's principal cash crop, cocoa. We, are at, we as a ministry have planned to take this direction to mainstreaming cocoa or chocolate inclusive as part of the Ghana brand. 
Jifa Gomashi, also used the opportunity to encourage students to choose cocoa farming as profession, dispelling the notion that it is only illiterates that engage in cocoa farming. Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Cocoa Board underscored the important contribution of cocoa to the country's development. The celebration of this year's National Chocolate Day drew in students, cocoa farmers and other stakeholders in the cocoa industry. The day is marked on the 14th of February every year to make a case for the consumption of made in Ghana chocolates and cocoa products. New mothers at the Tamale Teaching Hospital are sleeping in congested wards. Though the situation is not life threatening, Ifwa Akwa Harrising reports an overcrowded maternity ward is a norm at the hospital, which attends to cases from all over the northern region. 25 year old mother of twins, Adamu Idrisu, just gave birth some hours ago. She has no bed, so has to sleep on the floor. It is the same for four other women here on the postnatal ward at the Tamale Teaching Hospital. There are only 10 beds here. The situation is manageable now. We learned Thursday morning there were women on the floor all the way to the corridor entrance of the ward. The room is hot with no breeze. The fans that have been installed can only do so much. According to the acting public relations officer of the hospital, Ms. Bao Mohammed, it is a situation the hospital has to contend with as the largest referral point in the region. Quite unfortunately, because people would have to refer many of their cases from the peripheral uh, facilities to the hospital, we cannot limit the reception that we are going to give to whoever is referred to us. As and when they are referred, we just must take them in. To the extent that you can receive as many as 20, 25 uh, women, in that case, what the medical team will usually do is to look around and see those whose cases are less severe and have received some maximum attention will just be discharged to make way for others to also uh, receive some attention. Comfort Kelly is the principal midwife here. She has worked at the Tamale Teaching Hospital for 14 years. She is concerned about the situation. At this time, the deliveries are not many. But from June, July, then they will start increasing. And already we are in February and there's still congestion. So it's very stressful. At times they will bring a patient, you don't even know where to put the patient. Then you will just be wondering, I will tell them, send them to the other side. The other side will say, send them to the other side. And it's not pleasant for anybody. Even the relatives themselves, I mean, they get uh, discouraged. She has a solution, a suggestion that the balcony just outside the prenatal ward be utilized. I feel that it's good for the administrator or the superior to come and take a view at this area. We are wasting the place. And when it rains, it will be another problem. So when they come to look at the place and put up a temporary structure, which can accommodate most of the patients, than creating the congestion inside. With the second phase of expansion work at the Tamale Teaching Hospital yet to start, nurses, mothers and babies will only have to cope until a maternity block is constructed. Maybe until then, management will consider putting up a temporary structure so mothers like Adamu can have more room for comfort. Reporting for Joy News, Ifuakwa Harrison, Tamale. We have more stories coming up. Don't go away. A new national inclusive education policy for persons living with disability in Ghana is in the offing. A policy which is at its draft stage is expected to be reviewed and adopted by the end of the year. Deputy Minister of Education Alex Treme says the policy, when completed, will have le legal backing to help address the numerous challenges faced by disabled persons in addressing accessing education. Blind Union and the Ghana Education Service has just submitted a policy draft on inclusive education for persons living with disabilities. Areas in the draft covers resources and accessible school environments for persons living with disabilities. This policy also seeks to address issues, the numerous issues that persons with disabilities face and in trying to assess education. 
since the draft is actually long overdue, we we are expecting that the government will actually jump at it. So we feel that they will take this policing document, they will go through it, take it through the procedure if it has to be polished, polished up, and they finally adopt it and implement it, so that we can now get on with actually. Uh, providing education in a more fuller and meaningful way. So when this happens, then we feel that then we can also take our, our place and, and more and more persons with disability will become national assets and not, uh, not liabilities. Students with special needs have great difficulty in accessing education in a friendly school environment. Sometimes they have to travel long distances to assess education. It is to address these challenges that the Ghana Blind Union notes it will not relent in its effort to push for the implementation of the policy when finalized. We feel that this, this, this particular policy is too crucial to the development of our lives for us to just leave it handing. Anything that is related to the education of persons with disability and with the implementation of this policy, we shall continue to press it up and make sure that it is brought to government's attention, it is brought to the attention of the entire social collective. And until we make sure that we're able to get those facilities that can enable us to become assets. Deputy Minister of Education, Alex Treme, who received the document, noted the ministry would set up a committee to study the proposals in it. We put up a team on our side and we've just asked them to nominate some people so that um, maybe next week we can, we can start working on it and then we, we, we factor into our policy document for the year. Um, around June we'll have our national review conference and if things go as planned we can submit this policy to the national review uh, conference for adoption. The inclusive education policy which previously was scattered and varied have now been contained in one full document. It now seeks to bring a clear-cut direction and focus on improving equitable access to quality education for special needs children and provide the requisite teaching and learning materials to improve the capacity of specialized teachers. Yafusia Jemfi, Joy News, Accra. The Tamawa Refinery says government will have to inject the remainder of $67.7 million promised it if it is to operate efficiently. Though the company has received a little over $37 million of the amount, officials say the refinery is still financially challenged and is unable to operate efficiently. It currently refines less than 30,000 barrels of oil per day, even though it has a capacity of more than 45,000. The Tema Oil Refinery, after incurring heavy losses in oil trading and logistics, had its indebtedness growing worse from 246 million CDs to over 1.4 billion CDs between 2000 and 2009. The situation resulted in plant shutdowns, which cost the company $350,000 daily, affecting the efficiency and viability. Government promised an injection of $67.7 .7 million to save the company from total collapse, but gave $37.7 million of the amount. Officials, however, contend they are still financially handicapped. There is one thing we call the single obligor limit, which puts a limit on the amount of uh, finance that a bank can give one single person or entity. If crude oil price goes a bit high, we are looking to the tune of about $100 million for one parcel of crude. We turn over about 150 to $200 million every month. And there are only very few banks that can do that for us. If we get an LC of $100 million, it means that we are looking for another odd $120 million from the banks to enable, to enable the BDC to buy our products before we can pay by the LLC. So for one crude parcel that costs about 100 million, we are talking about, about 220 million, which is very difficult to get presently in the banking sector. The company has made some progress with the capital injection, although a lot more progress is required. We once mentioned that we had a generator in Canada, 6.5 megawatt generator. We go, we've gone through all the legal issues and whatever, and, I, and I'm happy to announce that generator has been received into a refinery. 
awaiting installation. We have also refurbished the ref uh, premium former unit. The premium former unit was shut down around 2002. That was the last time it was run. It, it's about 90% complete. We expect to start the unit in March and run it through until we exhaust the heavy nafta stock that we would have. We are only wishing and hoping that the balance of the money would come so that we can complete a lot of the issues that are there in the likes of uh, turnaround maintenance that is just in view and the uh, installation of some critical equipment that were acquired. And they have, however, engaged Petro Saudi in a strategic partnership to aid in the procurement of capital. Energy and Petroleum Minister Emmanuel Amabu applauded the Temayo refinery's progress in turning around its fortunes and pledged government's commitment to support the refinery with the needed funds. Uh, I know that since you, you, you received the first amount and uh, we requested uh, for, um, for, for, for us to see what has been done and I think that uh, we, we noted that a, a lot of work was done and so I think that it is in order that we keep supporting you to get the needed funds to complete the work that you've enumerated. I'm here to uh, let you know that we are committed to supporting TOR in that direction. And I believe that if we all stay and committed, you know, we look at losses as well. You know, what are the new things that we can do? It requires a lot of things to require even behavior changes. It requires us to have an attitude that we own this refinery as individuals. He also hinted of government's plans to make efficient the crude distillation units and expand from the expected 45,000 barrels per day to 60,000 barrels per day. Abigail Adumakunchi for Joy News. Four suspects involved in Thursday's mob action at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital have been remanded at the Kumasi prisons. The four were charged with assault and riot and will reappear at the Kumasi Circuit Court on the 25th of February. Meanwhile, the police is hunting for the rest of the mob. Mahmoud Mohamed Nouridin reports. The suspects are Usman Mohamed, 25, Sadat Mohamed, 30, Ahmed Mohamed Baba, 38, and Abdul Aziz Maru, 48. According to the police, the fourth suspect was arrested later on Thursday and were all arranged before court on Friday. Ashanti Regional Police Public Relations Officer ASP Mohamed Tanku says the regional command has interrogated two of the nurses already on Thursday. Two other nurses were also expected to appear before the regional police command for questioning on Friday. He says some staff at the hospital would also be questioned on Saturday. This morning we took them to the court. They've been remanded to reappear on the 25th of this month. So we are carrying on further investigations to arrest those who are out there and who are not yet in our custody. We took them to court for assault and also routing. Public relations officer of the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Kwame Frimpon, says authorities have been cooperating with the police to get to the bottom of the matter. He assures the family of the missing baby that management is ready to assist in any way to unravel the mystery behind the issue. Our spirit coordinator held a series of discussions with the uh, investigator and the investigator gave a date and a time. So our spirit coordinator uh, employed him to put it on paper which he did. And the letter that they sent to us was to the effect that they would like to meet all those who were on duty that day on 14th, 9 a.m. 14th, 9 a.m. This is documented. It was the police themselves who wrote to us. Last Wednesday, we had told them that some of the nurses were available and that if the police were ready, we can even bring them earlier than the 14th. And they said, yes, they will be available. So he said, they two went. Kwame Frimpon says the 36-year-old Tsueba was made to understand the baby was a stillborn and have proof to that effect. Meanwhile, the family of Sueba maintains they want the baby dead or alive. Meanwhile, at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, security has been beefed up at vantage points of the hospital to prevent a recurrence of Thursday's incidents. This, according to the management of the hospital, is to boost the security situation at the facility. Though CAM has returned to the facility as at Friday when the news team visited, some wards in the labor ward where the irate youth stormed were not functioning.
The Coalition of Concerned Teachers has vowed to resist the government fiat over some salary arrears due teachers. The teachers, according to the government, will now be paid only three months of all outstanding salaries, even though some have been working for close to two years without any salary. The coalition says any attempt by the Accountant General's Department to implement the order would lead to massive unrest. <laughs> religious leaders, where are the opinion leaders who always call on us to back down our demands any time we register our protest. This is the time for you to call on government to stop this rancid policy. If no one stops the government and this policy comes into effect, CCT will dazzle the government. We will force policymakers to do the right thing. Deputy Minister of Education in charge of pre-tertiary, Alex Chema, explained the directive on areas is to check the rate at which some district and regional directors of education recruit teachers without going through the appropriate procedure. There's window of opportunity for those genuine teachers who started a long time ago and are not paid. The window of opportunity is that you need to submit all the available documents to the Minister of Finance for clarification and you'll be paid. They have to sit down with the fair wages and we will provide the necessary input to the fair wages and if they are able to come together, um, the fair wages and for that matter, uh, the Minister of Finance and Controller will pay them. The Oman Hine of Kokufu Berima of Fair Akwasi Akwaji Asio II also added his voice to criticism of the decision to scrap trainee teachers' allowances, describing the reasoning as hollow. He tasked government to take a second look at the decision and find other innovative ways of motivating teachers as they play a key role in the development of the nation. The argument that our friends are putting up is that by re removing the allowances, you'll be, you'll be able to train more teachers. What a hollow argument. <laughs> The motivation is not there. How do you, how do you train more teachers? Motivation is strong in de developing teachers for our schools. So if you want to improve our, our education, maintain the allowances to teachers and the time leave to teachers. Other than that, you are going to destroy the training for them. But to you, but to you, to whom much is given. The Coalition of Concerned Teachers Ghana, a breakaway from the Ghana National Association of Teachers and the National Association of Graduate Teachers, also inaugurated its Board of Trustees for its Teachers Fund. Now, a commemorative cloth has been printed in honor of the late BBC presenter and former Joy FM morning show host, Komla Dumo, who died in London last month. It comes shortly after the announcement of the date for his final funeral rites next week. And Joy News' is Gladys Uredu joins me in the studio with a sample of the cloth. Good evening to you, Gladys. Good evening, Lizzie. And, uh, tell us about uh, this cloth, even uh, as, uh, as we try to get the cameras to uh, zoom in Okay, so um, basically it's black and white. Um, the, the family believe he has lived a life worth celebrating rather than just mourn and grieve. We need to celebrate him. So um, this is black and white to symbolize the a celebration of life. And it has a signature printed on the cloth. And um, so if, if you see one that does not have a signature, then you, of course you should know you are not going in for the right um, cloth. And whatever uh, proceeds we make from the sales of the cloth would go into the uh, foundation account, the Komala Dumo Foundation set up by the Komala Dumo family. Okay, so now looking at it critically, I noticed that uh, the name we have on the cloth is actually Kobla. Um, I think this is one typical um, printing mistake, yes. I believe whoever printed might have made a mistake because um, it should actually be Komla, but sometimes, you know, printing, we do it in bulk, okay. so it will be difficult to go back and have to, you know, miss, um, do the whole thing again. Okay. So but when will this be worn? It will be worn on the Saturday, the day uh, of his burial. It's a three-day period of um, 
celebration of life. So um, on the Saturday, that is when um, the public and members of the family, loved ones, would be seen in the club. And you can also get your piece at um, Joy FM front desk, okay. and then at Dom FM at Tema. And I don't know if I can talk about the price too as well. No, we're not talking about the price. <laughs> okay, so right. I'm sure so if you um, get there, you can get to know. Sure. Yeah. How yes. much so it's, it's not difficult to find it. Just come to the um, premises of Multimedia Group Limited, the reception at um, Joy FM and Multi TV, and then you'd get a piece, half piece or full piece. You'd get your size to, you know, fit right. you. Thank you very much, Gladys. Thank you, Easy. Up next, we bring you business news. Now for some business reports with me, Abigail Adomakwenchi. Now the minority caucus in parliament has blamed the free fall of the city on the government's failure to put in place resources to absorb the excess demand that was evident in January. Speaking to Joy News about the current economic challenges facing the country, minority spokesperson on finance, Dr. Anthony Akuto say, uh, said he expects the Minister of Finance to come back to parliament with a new budget to arrest the situation. Everybody knows that January, February, March is a month where import uh, LCs and so forth are due. Typically what you do is that the governor calls around commercial banks so they can get an idea of the foreign forex required for, the, um, for that quarter and put it in enough reserves to bring down the demand. If you, have, you claim you have 5.3 or 5. so billion dollars of reserves, nothing stops you from putting in much more, reducing your target for the three months impulse, but making sure that the demand is satisfied. Whether or not these directives control measures will achieve their intended purposes, we are yet to see. Secondly, you notice that even cabinet sought to further clarification on the issues. I, I'm very surprised that cabinet itself did not understand what the governor was done. Subsequently, we know that the governor has been meeting with some of the stakeholders, and already some concessions are, are being made to certain st stakeholders. So, which tells you that in the implementation, the Bank of Ghana has to be very careful. Clearly, if the Bank of Ghana listens and the Ministry of Finance does what it is supposed to do, we may be able to arrest uh, that free fall. But let me uh, point out that the government itself has suffered because of the depreciation in the budget. In the budget statement, the government assumed that the exchange rate will average around 2.2. So if you're already above 2.2, then any expenditure that's forex related will have to be adjusted upwards. But what that means is that on the expenditure side, the gap is getting wider, which means that people may, you may not expect to reach your fiscal targets unless you take uh, countervailing measures. So I'm expecting, we are expecting that in the light of these developments, the Minister of Finance will have to come back with what I think should be a new budget to address uh, the dislocation in, in January. Because right now, the budget has directed that utility tariffs ought to be adjusted, petroleum adjustments will come, those are, have not changed. It is not surprising that January inflation is, is at 13.8%. The government must pay attention because the inflation is also affected by the depreciation of the city. Well, Vice President Kassia Misa Arthur says real estate developers cannot be exempted from paying the new 17.5% VAT, especially when all others, including the vulnerable in society, are paying. This followed a petition to him by the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association, Greta, to exclude them from the tax payment as it will shoot up the prices of housing in Ghana. Ghana's housing population currently at 5 million is likely to hit 32 million by 2022, according to Greda. The housing deficit continues to grow, leaving more than 50% of Ghanaians living in indecent housing facilities. Greda, for these reasons, among others, petitioned the vice president to help exempt them from the new VAT rate introduced. The new VAT act came as a little surprise to us as, as Greda council members because... Um, we were not really in the know, you know, so we've had to review a few provisions, look at it, and then consult amongst ourselves. And the bottom line is that it's going to have an impact 
on consumers. And the eventual users and the price of homes are going to be more expensive. And I believe from a policy point of view, it defeats the government's own agenda of providing affordable houses for Ghanaians. They also expressed worry over the loose regulations in the housing industry. We don't have regulations that, in fact, the industry is very loosely regulated. There's very little regulation. So apart from GREDA members who subscribe to the articles of GREDA and so on, you know, the industry is left ajar. Anybody enters, that's what they like. No controls, no regulation. And recently on radio, there have been quite a number of discussions about the quality of houses that are being built. You know. So maybe one of the things that we will um, raise, and you know, just to um, keep you in the know, is the need for an industry regulator to be put in place, you know, to regulate the, the entire housing industry. Vice President Kwesi Misa Arthur, in response to Greda's petition, insisted there was the need for them to pay VAT. If you make a request that the people who are able to afford these new apartments in Accra, the ones that you are talking about, the people who live in Trazaku, should not pay a tax because you are providing affordable housing. You are in effect saying that the people who can most afford it, let's give them um, let's not ask them to contribute. Your thing is not discriminating in the way that protects the people who cannot afford it from the tax, but also force the people who can afford it to pay something. So you, you have to look at it again. Greta, meanwhile, is still negotiating with government to have some tax exemptions on building materials. Well, away from that, the head of marketing at CIG Microfinance Ghana says the company is committed to rebranding microfinance in the country. Most microfinance institutions have failed Ghanaians with poor managerial skills over the past years. But according to head of marketing Marion Yabi, CIG Microfinance is putting measures in place to restore citizens' confidence in microfinance. CIG Microfinance has been in operations over the past five years as a financial institution. The company, according to its head of marketing, is committed to certain standards capable of earning the trust of Ghanaians. So unfortunately, uh, microfinances haven't enjoyed um, very good publicity. Um, but for us as a company, we hope to set ourselves apart from um, the bad name. And um, we're up to the standards. We're doing well. We've grown through the years. And we are geared towards, you know, delivering quality to the customer and to the people, the stakeholders generally, and um, everybody that deals with us. Meanwhile, as part of the fifth anniversary celebration of the company, 100,000 Ghana CDs has been committed to its corporate social responsibility. Over 780 persons so far have benefited from a free medical screening currently ongoing in the capital, Accra. The screening covers hepatitis B, hypertension, diabetes, malaria, body marks in this, eye screening and general consultation with free medications. The good news is everyone can take advantage of this general health screening. And this is our way of giving back to the communities where we operate. And so we have looked at the areas um, where we have made some advancements or profits, if you will. And as you can see where our branches are located, this project is going on. So we hope that, of course, this will get the people to understand that we're not only interested in their monies, but also in their well-being, you know, in their financial life improvements, and then also um, to see that their lives have improved generally. And so that is why CIG at five is dedicated to the health of the customer. Some beneficiaries of the program at the Cantamanto Market branch shared their thoughts. Well, we know as traders, we hardly get a chance to attend to hospitals. So we are most grateful to CIG for bringing the, these facilities to here. Bank for my idea, pa, can't you have my idea. The Dome, Medina, Thema, and the Kaswa branches of the company are next in line to open to the public for free medical screening. The free medical screening is expected to run till the end of February. And that'll be all for business. I'm Abigail Adumakwenchi. There's more news ahead. Don't go away. Sports is brought to you by Tigo and Cowbell. My name is Marian Toure. 
We go on to our first story, and head of Greengrass Technology, Frank Abouahin, has assured that the Accra Stadium pitch, which is in a deplorable state, will return to its normal state in a month's time. The caretakers of the pitch are working vigorously to get the pitch, which has lost its greenish nature and looks very dry and brownish due to lack of water, to keep the surface fresh and back to normal. Joyce Sports visited the stadium yesterday and spoke to Frank Abouahin, who believes he is on course to get the pitch to its normal state. You know, the pitch is in entirety is 100%, and the length is 100 meters by about 75. So when we are working on the pitch, we divide it into four quarters. So each quarter is then divided into 20%. So when you are assessing the pitch, you do it in each quarter of the pitch. So we have an imaginary line that runs from penalty spot to penalty spot. And then you have the existing center line, which everybody sees through the middle. So when you run a line from the penalty spot to the penalty spot and through the middle, you have four corners. As you can see behind me, if you look at the pitch, you see that the four corners of the pitch all has grass. From one corner to the other corner is fully grassed. From the other corner to the other corner is fully grassed. The only part of the pitch that we are having a problem is through the middle, which is the highly concentrated area for any particular match or use. So when you break it down on 20 percentage points, each corner of the pitch is at 20 percent. So AC Milan have lost their influential Ghanaian midfielder Sule Muntari for the crucial UEFA Champions League knockout tie against Spanish side Atletico Madrid to, due to suspension. Clarence Sidov has been made to deal with the 29-year-old's unavailability after he picked four bookings in the group stages, which automatically makes him ineligible to play for the Rosaneris. Muntari, who has scored once for Milan in the competition, picked cautions in both legs against Barcelona as well as games against Dutch side Ajax Amsterdam in the group stage. The former Udinese star has other bookings was against PSV Eindhoven in the playoffs. And before we go, FIFA General Secretary Genome Vax has uh, issued a warning to host cities of the 2014 Brazil Cup ahead of a key visit to the nation. Valak would arrive in Brazil Sunday to access the readiness of the venues for the summer's tournaments. The trip, which would include cities where work is ongoing on the stadia, are well behind schedule. The World Cup begins in Brazil on June 12th. But five of the 12 host stadia are still under construction, including the Sao Paulo venue, due to stage the opening match. FIFA is known to be exploring alternatives should some stadia fail to be completed on time. Valk sets a final decision on the city's involvement will be made on Tuesday. And that is where we close the curtain for sports. My name is Maria Touré. Stand by for Israel Eye. Awesome. Valentine is today set aside to celebrate love, and one would have expected that love messages will be the most trending on social media. But that doesn't happen to that doesn't seem to be the case. Instead, people have Valentine Valentine's Day. There are some funny videos that are trending. I'm Calipos, the only boss with one nest. Bam. <laughs> The only boss with one S. Bam, <laughs> You are very famous in Ghana now. Yes. How do you feel? <laughs> Charlie, the fame is not easy. You know, I've been given the platform. Yeah. Platform here, the Ashamen sir. The American final. I buy cream, you see. You know that. Because I hate you. You are a nobody. I'm a somebody, Papa. <laughs> hey. Who's that here? Who said here? Stop! Who said here? Come on, stop! Stop! Who said here? Hey, move more there. Who said here? Are you my? Are you my Are you my? Are you still recording? I said cut. Who said here? Come on. I don't. I don't like that. Who, who said here? I said here. Hey, older oh, guy. Older oh, oh, guy. That but more recording. Come back, come on, why? Hey, Mopo, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Hey, 
Oh no, guy. What do you do? You're ready to make me see yourself. Allah, 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 brother. What's up? How it, how it is? Hey, you fresh, you. Hey, our boy, grandpa. I'm a good friend, I'm a, you know, I mean, I mean, he is not there. Yeah, I'm a good fucking blessed man, you know. Sure. Wait, you can't be no one. You can't suck it. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Who said you? You said you? Yeah, yeah. No, she said my house are out to cheat. You know how? My house are out to cheat, my boy. You said you? Am I your co you for? Chia now, you can't do what you are. Oh, yes, yes. What is that? Chia? Chia now, can't find you. What is it? No, am I your co you for? What's it? Chia? Chia now, can't do what you are. Let's go. Chill, chill, chill. You know, 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 chill, chill. You All right, that's Ghanaian actress Nadia Buari took to Twitter to share a few relationship tips with all the ladies as they mark Valentine's Day. U.S. rapper Jay-Z spent about, just about $2,390 on an intertwined silver bracelet with gold accents which features a lock that can only be opened with a heart-shaped key. I want to talk to you today about drugs. The sensational Ghanaian actress Nadia Buari tells ladies the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenges and controversy. She goes further to also say the purpose of a relationship is not to have another who might complete you, but to have another with whom you might share your completeness. Ladies, Anyone can admire your frame, but a real man will try to understand the portrait. She says she chose to share these few tips on Valentine's Day because while all the girls are ecstatic about the gifts, TLCs and sex, they must know if the man they are receiving all these things from would last in their life. Nadia Buari believes her relationship with the Nigerian bad boy Jam Ike has been awesome. Now. Meanwhile, in U.S., the pop queen Beyonce was treated to an early Valentine's Day gift full of silver and gold. Sources believe her husband, the rap mogul Jay-Z, gave the 53-year-old an intricate bracelet to help out her heart feather and lock and key. Known as the promise, the intertwined silver bracelet with gold accents features a lock that can only be opened by a heart-shaped key. It is described by the designers as showing the promise made between two people. On the Tracori website, it says, made of intertwining silver and gold, the design represents two unique individuals uniting through a promise. Once the bracelet is fastened, only the key holder can unlock the promise. The connection chain links both parts of the bracelet and symbolizes that the bracelet is always connected. The Tracori bracelet costs $2,390 and it is said that the two often treat each other to gifts and getaways. Right, that's it for showbiz. That's it for the bulletin. Before we go, there'll quick round through our top stories. Massive distraction to environment ongoing at Dokochina near Buidam has legal miners trooping to take advantage of gold rash. Attorney General assures Parliament her office is not relenting on efforts to retrieve monies due the state from recent court rulings on award of inordinate judgment debts. Management of Tamawa Refinery appeal for additional capital injection to help revamp it. Coalition of Concerned Teachers vow to resist government's fiat to pay only three months of salary as due teachers. And in business, Vice President says real estate developers cannot be exempted from paying VAT. That's all. My name is Israel Lyon.